If you're anything like me, you know what it feels like to have let yourself go. But it's time to lock back in, exit your lazy girl era, and become the woman that you are called to be. Here are the 10 habits you can implement to become healthier, wealthier, and more beautiful. Develop a skincare routine and stick to it. Right now, I'm actually educating myself about skincare. I would say a big con of just trying to be an academic weapon throughout high school is I was very focused in just my work and didn't really care about things like skincare and makeup. But now I kind of feel behind, so I feel like I'm kind of playing catch up, but we all have our own journey. But skincare is so important. I think our face really represents our personal brand, so having clear skin just gives off a really good impression. I personally have dry skin, so I've been talking to one of my friends who also has dry skin to figure out what products she uses. And don't be afraid to buy products that don't look that sexy. Some of the best products are not aesthetically pleasing, and some of the best products aren't even expensive. Or read an impactful and life-giving book every day. Cultivating beauty is really important, as I talked about with the skincare routine, and I think cultivating a strong mind is equally important, if not more important. We're trying to be beauty and brains, guys. For me, I love to read the Bible every day because I feel like there's so much wisdom in there. But other books I like is Rich Dad, Poor Dad, the Almanac of Naval Ravikant, How to Win Friends and Influence People, and The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. Personal finance principle I have is never skimp on education. The main things I spend money on are education and experiences. Because when you spend money on education, educating yourself about high income skills, you end up investing in yourself and you reap a big return by becoming a more high income person. Speaking of finances, hot girls update their budget tracker. If you don't already have a budget, I highly recommend setting one because if you're faithful with a little amount of resources, you'll be faithful with a lot of resources. This is something I'm personally growing in because when I first started making money, I definitely spent it irresponsibly. Now I'm starting to think I want to build generational wealth. I want to have the habits of a rich person. I definitely recommend reading the book Rich AF. It explains finances really simply but gives you a really comprehensive guide to it. And I use my bank of America to track my budget. I don't really use a complex spreadsheet at the moment. Also, if you want to control your spending and make less impulse purchases, on Notion, I literally have what's called a shopping wish list. So every single time I get the urge to buy something, I put it in this list and then I review it from time to time and figure out which purchases are actually the most important to me. Because sometimes you might want to buy something, but then two weeks later you realize you don't need it or you don't want it. Post social events for friends. I feel like no one talks about this whole social life aspect of becoming your best self. I think sometimes you need to enter an isolation season where you're just focused on developing yourself, not spending a ton of social time, but I feel like influencers that talk about self-development do not talk enough about actually being a cool person that people want to be around. And one of my goals that I think that you should also set for yourself is becoming a community builder. Someone who brings people together. When you host social events, you yourself get to have fun and you also get to just bring other people together, which is super fulfilling and honestly also increases how people socially perceive you. It definitely increases your influence and reputation. Some examples of social events you can host is a picnic in the summer, a Bible study, you can go to the beach with friends, or you can just have people over for like a home cooked dinner. Or you can have your friends over to bake something. Follow a workout split. This is something that I think will literally change the game for you. Glowing up physically in terms of your fitness, I think is one of the greatest ways to glow up because it changes everything. Obviously, you can use gua sha and try to deep puff your face, but personally for me, I have the least amount of face fat when I am in the best shape physically. I also have a I'm reading this book called Outlive. It talks about how to have longevity, how to live longer, how to live healthier. One of the biggest, most important components of health is physical exercise. Before you start thinking about all these supplements and fancy wellness routines, get your exercise life together. I am currently following a push pull and legs split. Let's talk about some ways that you can keep yourself motivated on your fitness journey and how you can actually stay consistent. So what I do is I follow a lot of fitness accounts because every time I'm on Instagram and I'm scrolling through my stories, it really motivates me to cultivate that healthy lifestyle to not only get in shape, but to stay in shape. Also, I just romanticize the process, like pick out your gym outfit the night before and in the morning, listen to some fun music, take pre-workout. And another reason why fitness is so important to me is I want my exterior to match my inner discipline. I just think it's so cool to be like that fit girl, you know, and I'm not currently there, but I'm on the journey to becoming that. So I will keep you guys updated on my fitness journey. The next habit I feel like is not very traditional or you don't really hear much, but it's to pray and pray specific prayers. And if you're not religious, that might just mean journaling very specifically, journaling as your higher self. It's just like being very specific about what you want. I pray for the fruits of the spirit. So one of the fruits of the spirit is self-control. So I'm praying God give me self-control to stick on my workout split, to eat healthy, and to also help me be kind and gentle with others. I don't think self-help should just be about helping yourself. I think you've really mastered self-help when your self-help doesn't just help you, when it helps other people around.
around you. And also the next one, I feel like you don't hear much, but read articles when you're like waiting in line or during transportation. Yes, books are amazing, but I would argue that articles are even more effective in learning a specific topic because it's very straight to the point. Some books, there's just one thesis and then the author's just rambling about it over 300 pages. But articles get very straight to the point and they're super quick to read. Here are the type of articles I like to read. I read from Investopedia. It's about personal finance, the economy. I read about makeup and skincare and I read Gymshark articles about fitness, what you can be implementing. And articles are so underrated. Journal updates about your personal development journey. Journal about your goals every end of the month. Do a little reset entry. Talk about how the last month went. Talk about how you want this month to go. What you measure gets improved. Also, I love the idea about documenting your personal development journey. It's a big reason on why I create content online because it's fun for me to look back on. It's inspiring to others. And if there's a point in my life where everything really feels like it's fallen apart and I'm at my rock bottom, I can remember how I got out of previous rut, how I overcame previous challenges. My next habit that has really changed the game for me is text a mentor. I have a lot of mentors in my life, whether that's financially, spiritually, physically. Well, I do want to find like a fitness mentor. That's still something I'm looking for. Here's how you can find a mentor. Identify someone of influence. Who are you willing to trade lives with? You should never ask someone to be your mentor if you wouldn't willingly trade lives with them. For example, don't take money advice from a poor person. Ask to take this person out for coffee. Pay for their drink. Ask them detailed questions and then try to take them out to coffee again. And then as you continue to meet, you can formally ask them to be your mentor if it's a good fit. And be very specific about what you want to learn from them. When you ask someone to be your mentor, talk about what you admire specifically about them, what you hope to develop into and how you think that they could help you. In a mentor-mentee relationship, the mentee should be really caring. You need to be clear about your goals. Don't expect your mentor to handhold you and ask you specific questions. It's about them sharing their knowledge and you direct the relationship. My current mentors I'm closest with is my pastor, another content creator that's Christian. We talk about spiritual growth and a business mentor who literally watched me grow up. But I have many informal mentors, people I don't really specifically meet with for a mentoring session. Try to make everyone in your life a mentor. You can learn something from anyone. And the most successful people are constantly on the lookout for what they can learn from their peers, from their superiors. Last one is so important. Have a Sabbath, rest day, self-care day. Learn how to rest well. For me, Saturdays are my self-care day, my day where I just spend time with God, where I let myself just rest from all my physical activity and also work. And I just try to enjoy myself and hang out with friends. I specifically think the feminine soul needs to have some more slowness and relaxation. Here are some things you can do during a rest day. Sleep, <laughs> take a bath, take care of your personal hygiene, go shopping, hang out with friends, journal, prayer and Bible, and spend time outside, guys. Hot girls get sun in, vitamin D. I like to go on a hot girl walk, like every day, because I've set a goal to get 10K steps, which honestly I think is another habit you should implement. Make sure to follow me on my Instagram at AnnieLongYT, because on my broadcast channel, I post a lot of self-development updates and inspirational content to motivate you guys on your journey. Love you, and I'll see you in the next video.